Hello and welcome back to Motoring Madness here on Corinium Radio. Um, we are George Lunn and my good friend David Libson. Yo. Um, and this time we are doing it a bit differently. We're both recording it for the radio, for Corinium Radio, um, and we're filming it for YouTube. Yeah, multi-platform. Yeah, so I don't know what you could want to call it, a video podcast, a radio video it's going to be going out on radio we're going to do the youtube and we're going to put it up as a podcast on its own as well yeah maybe. potentially so, yeah. yeah so it's um it's a multimedia thing whatever you want to call it it's some sort of uh, motoring media awesome of some description anyway if you're not familiar with motoring madness um we like to talk about cars and many vague things that surround them um so Today we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about this month's news in cars, because we're going to do a monthly show now. We used to do a bi-weekly. Nope. Something like that. Like, wait, bi-weekly, does that mean twice a week? Or how about, how about two, fortnightly? Fortnightly, that would yeah. be. Um, and now we're doing a monthly show to make it, we're going to make it shorter, sweeter, less often, but hopefully better quality, better content. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about this this month in cars. Uh, we're going to talk about our own cars because that's what we like to talk about, and we all own some vaguely interesting cars. Something and like I'm that. sure in the future we'll be um, getting guests on and interviewing them about their slightly more interesting cars. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much a good introduction of who we are. We have a YouTube channel if you're listening on the radio. If Hashtag VW Surfwagon. Look yeah, VW Surfwagon. Because um, well, we like VWs and yep. and surfing and surfing apparently. Um, so yeah, I think we should start off with um, some car news then. Awesome. I guess, get straight into it. So there's been some pretty cool new cars coming out recently um, on kind of every end of the spectrum. Yeah. Let's crack on with uh, kind of the craziest thing that's been announced recently, yeah. the new McLaren Speedtail. Yes. It looks very crazy. bonkers. It looks like one of those um, like concept cars that they're like, we're probably never going to release this. It looks mental. But here's a cool picture of it that an artist has drawn. Yeah. But it's real. It's real. <laughs> it, it does look exactly like yeah. a concept car. It's pretty crazy. Except they've already sold all of them and they haven't even made one yet. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy, isn't it? Do you know what, when they announced the release for them? Oh, it was, uh, I mean, at the time of recording, it was like a week ago. Okay. So it's, uh, I don't know if they've actually produced any yet. Right. Um, but they've all been sold in yeah. pre-orders and there's only like a hundred of them or something there's not like that. that many cars that sell out in pre-orders no and that cost like two million each yeah it's unreal it's insane but the performance figures are, are kind of yeah hit me up with next level figures. um they haven't said it's a hybrid okay uh, as a lot of the modern kind of hypercar things like are the, like the p1 yeah like the p1 it's worth saying it's part of uh, mclaren's ultimate series yeah uh, so that includes the p1 the uh the senna mm -hmm. and now the speed tail and um very cool yeah so it's a hybrid powertrain they're not saying like how much power each part of the hybrid right. thing okay. produces okay but in as total they're saying 1035 horsepower wow it's quite a lot wow it's quite a lot and um it's all about kind of ultimate straight line speed and aerodynamic performance okay so it does 250 miles an hour blimey um although no one's actually seen it being tested, so maybe it does faster. Who yeah, knows? Who knows? It's a bit like the um, the Chiron, the Bugatti Chiron, yeah. that they still don't know how fast yeah, it can exactly. go because they don't have any tyres that exist <laughs> that can <laughs> let it go that fast. I don't think there's anywhere in the UK you could actually drive a car at 250 miles an hour. No. Like, there's no racetracks that have a straight that's long enough for that. Yeah, even a runway yeah. would be arguably limited, too short. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, it's, of course, one something that's kind of very nostalgic about it it's got three seats the central driving yeah. position like the, the old McLaren F1, F1. Yeah. Uh, so it's very cool I mean the acceleration is unreal they're saying 0 to 186 miles an hour and get this 12.8 seconds wow that's um, I don't even know I can't begin to compute no. what that feels like What do you know do you have the 0 to 60 stat though uh, I don't actually okay um, they haven't released that okay. I think it's it's probably going to be pretty similar to most hypercars, you yeah. know, two two something, two to three seconds. Yeah. Um, but I think it's after that after that, that it gets crazy. Mm. unbelievable. Yeah, um, it's, that's way faster than anything Bugatti's done in in recent years. So yeah. they're just going for full out. Well, this is the thing: combining electronic and big engines is so great. <laughs> I mean, if you think about fully electric cars like the what was that Croatian one? That they oh, had? the the the, the Remap. That's it. Yeah, that did 
not to 60 in what like two seconds or something yeah. and if you combine that with the power of a petrol engine as well then you've got a super super amounts of power yeah it's going to be interesting to see over the next few years whether anyone actually makes a faster accelerating road car because i feel like they i think people say it's kind of a limit of yeah. um i think probably tire performance more than anything else yeah. like how much more grippy can you make a car off the line yeah. and if you if it was like complete grip and no wheel spin then everything would have to be so much stronger internally yeah. to take the shock of that do you think so, eventually they'll have to start taking into consideration the human body and whether it can take that much uh, g-force <laughs> i mean if you if you go to drag racing then yeah. they do accelerate yeah, that's true even faster than that yeah. they may they probably make the new mclaren look slow yeah uh, they do like naught to 300 miles an hour in yeah. five seconds yeah, it's it's, it's bonkers yeah um okay maybe not then but i know i know what you're saying yeah. it's unless you're trained in it like you have to consider kind of whether your average human being yeah. who happens to have won the lottery and can yeah. now afford a McLaren <laughs> yeah. speed tail can yeah. actually be capable of driving yeah. that but I yeah. guess we'll find out yeah that's true really interesting um, shall we take it to the other end of the spectrum now we can do that with the new Suzuki Jimny wow <laughs> <laughs> maybe what? we should have started with that <laughs> and gone up maybe mm. no I like, I like it this way around yeah um, they've got a new one anyone who's seen photos of it it looks great. Yeah. For anyone who hasn't seen photos of it, it's like a mini Mercedes G wagon. Yeah, it looks like, like really retro. Yeah. It's really cool. It looks great. And the original Suzuki Jimnys were pretty cool too. Yeah, awesome. They're really popular, weren't they? Really popular. You see loads of people like actually off roading with them, doing yeah. proper. They're like actually good off roaders yeah, yeah. considering they're very small cars. I'm not sure if there would be anyone that doesn't know what a Suzuki Jimny is because they're pretty popular, but they are like tiny little compact 4x4s. Yeah. If you imagine a a little cheap yeah just really small <laughs> yeah it's and, great um, yeah they're, they're all such a fun concept that's it. great uh, the new one is um, it's much like the old one it looks a little bit cooler yeah. I'd say yeah. um, it's got a one and a half litre engine yeah that's really aspirated nothing particularly exciting no. um, four wheel drive low range no right that's so cool that it's that small but it's got all the capabilities of an actual big off-road yeah. 4x4 but well, the thing is it's like you don't need if your car is that small and light oh yeah you don't need like silly power and no exactly all yeah. the stuff it's just simple it's true it's, it's really simple so cool i love them um but yeah the new ones are very much i it must have been a conscious thing that they it must have been a conscious thing that they um made it look retro that must be yeah like i a, think so they've done on purpose I think people are like since the Land Rover Discovery Discovery? Defender <laughs> oh, yeah, not the Discovery no one cares about that no, uh, no offence to Discovery drivers um, since the Defender's gone yeah. out of production um, you know I think there's a certain gap for old looking yeah. SUVs and of course like the G-Wagon hasn't mm. really changed in 30 no, years exactly, and, yeah. Um, yeah, I think cool. people just love that so yeah I mean all the modern SUVs are very they lo it loses the whole kind of four by four yeah. look. So I think it's very cool that they're harking back to it. It's really yeah. nice. And what's also really cool about this particular generation of Jimmy is that uh, in Japan, they get rid of the uh, kind of flared out wheel arches. Yeah. They pull the tracking in a little bit and uh, they sell it as a K car with a smaller engine. Yeah. And if, <laughs> if you don't know what a K car is, we actually spoke about it in a previous did, yeah. episode of Motoring Madness. It's a different kind of sub regulation of yeah. Japanese vehicles. They're just. And uh, you can get them on like a, a, you don't have to have as it's much license yeah, so or something. You don't need a full car license. Yeah. They're just they're smaller than normal cars yeah. and so smaller there's engines. Less tax on them or something. Yeah. It's something to do with when, back in the day, when everyone wanted very cheap, very small cars. Um, but they still make them today. Yeah. Right? So what is so it? A 660cc turbo version. Yep. Which I bet is so, <laughs> so slow, but so far. How could you not want one? No. That's the question. Um, I wonder if they're still four wheel drive. I think they are. They must just be the same yeah, car, yeah. but just smaller engine. Yeah. Basically. With no flares. No flares. <laughs> I'd love to have a K car version of a Suzuki Jimny and take it off roading. That'd be so much fun. Turn up, everyone's in their big defenders. You turn up in your little K car Jimny. Yeah. Like, it's going to be yeah. interesting. It looks great. It's going to be inter interesting to see how the, the new one does in like serious off roading. Because at times, like when we've gone mm. off roading with Sam when he had his discovery, yeah. Um, like there were always a couple of Jimmys 
like tagging along yeah and they, they were great yeah, they were always they completely well. fine yeah um you know usually slightly lifted and modified or whatever but essentially yeah nothing crazy going on yeah it'll be interesting to see if the uh the new one can keep up with those. keep up with that yeah. yeah that's very cool i do like them um so we're gonna keep it going with the whole car news thing um with one final little thing we're going to mention which is that the nurburgring lap time has been beaten mm. so a lamborghini svj i think the Aventador. Aventador, SVG, yeah, yeah. They always have a stupid number of letters yes. and things after their names, Lamborghinis. Just to make it super um, memorable. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but anyway, the Aventador SVJ um, was the current Nürburgring road legal car record holder. Yeah. Um, with a time of 6 minutes 44 seconds. That's very quick. Which is very quick. It's very, very quick. Um, but the new Porsche GT2 RS, which... Is I assume it's just their new RS because they did GT3 RS before that. I no, the, so. the GT3 and GT2 are different. Oh, like yeah. the GT3 is more like a super kind of lightweight stripped oh, out yeah, version. It is, isn't it? GT2 yeah. is like mega high performance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the GT2 has just taken four seconds over four seconds off that with six minutes forty. Which That's pretty is crazy. Very crazy. It's quick. It's and quick. yeah, it's it's very quick, and it's worth it's worth mentioning that Porsche are now the yeah holders in. Both records. They hold the production card record with the GT2 RS and also the overall lap record of a Nürburgring, yeah. which they already held uh, from like the 80s with a, an old Porsche Le Mans car, yeah. 956 or something, or 962, I can't remember. But yeah, the new one, uh, basically they took their Porsche 919 Le Mans uh, winning car from 2017 mm. and... Um, modified it a lot and made it really <laughs> really fast and they called it the Porsche 919 Evo really and really non road legal <laughs> nowhere near <laughs> and um, it's quite interesting so they took it to uh, to Spa in Belgium first which is kind of yeah. classic old racetrack and beat Lewis Hamilton's 2017 pole position time oh wow um, which he subsequently took back this year but we'll gloss over that <laughs> and um, and then they took it to the Nürburgring and did a 5 minute 19 second lap Blimey. It's unbelievable. Five minute 19. It's crazy. If you haven't seen the video of it, go and watch it. It looks like it's been sped up. It's so fast. What's crazy about that is that's like nearly a minute and a half quicker than the road legal yeah. one. Round what is quite a big track. Yeah. Like that's, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. That's outrageous. Yeah, yeah, the video footage does look like it's sped up. Yeah. It looks like um, it's just like times two. The balls there. of the man who drove that yeah. are huge. <laughs> it's... It's terrifying, but very, very cool. Very impressive. Awesome. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it for what we're going to cover on Car News yeah. this uh, this month. But we'll, great. but next month we'll do the same thing again with anything else that's coming. Let's talk about our cars. So again, we've probably done this in the wrong order and gone from some very exciting, <laughs> very fast, or very cool like the Jimny uh, cars to our very budgety young persons but i quite like that though we yeah. we're giving advice or reviews as such on cars that people can actually afford yeah true that i'm not sure many people listening to this are going to go out and buy <laughs> a mclaren longdale after they listen really? to really <laughs> yeah yeah so um i guess i bought my car first so I'll, yeah go I'll ahead. first um we'll discuss for anyone who doesn't know my my previous car was a rover covered in bananas and you can go check that out on our youtube channel um it was it served the purpose yeah um and it was funny it was it was funny from the outside and from the inside it was the most boring car i've ever driven it was very big i seem to remember it was very big and somehow not very spacious yeah it was a big old rover saloon that handled like a boat yeah Hmm. it was quite comfortable Uh, (laughs) Anyway, yeah, I, I went from one extreme to the other. I went from the big boaty rover. Before you go on to what you've bought now, can you talk about the MPG on that rover? Oh, uh, I think I averaged like 23 to the gallon in it. That's so bad. What engine was it? 1.8. A Honda Honda 1.8. Why was it so bad on fuel? Just because it's such a big, heavy car, I, I don't suppose. Know. Anyway, we'll move on. It was big, slow, and uneconomical. Um, I then uh, I decided I wanted something kind of small and nippy not necessarily super fast but no. fun and um 
I eventually settled on a Ford Puma, which Alex actually suggested to me. Alex, another member of Venus Surf Wagon. Um, In another podcast? Yeah, exactly. Which is the first time ever. We normally give quite jokey suggestions on what we should buy in our video podcasts, don't we? And it's the first time ever someone's actually gone out and bought one of those suggestions. <laughs> For so, better or worse, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I bought a Ford Puma, um, yeah. which is just a little kind of... Little nippy thing. Sporty hatchback thing from the late 90s. Um, when they were new, they were very sought after. Like People loved them. When they yeah. Were new, didn't, like, they had great reviews and things. I think it Basically, it was based on the... Um, the same chassis as the Mark IV Fiesta. Right. Um, but it was slightly sportier setup. It's a lot kind of lower yep. profile. And, and um, it came with a range of engines that you could also get in the Fiesta, but it also came with a specially designed 1.7, which is the engine that I've got, mm-hmm. which they co-developed with uh, with Yamaha. Nice. So it's basically a motorbike engine. It's basically a keyboard. Uh, yep. Or a, yes. Anything Yamaha any, anything make. Yamaha <laughs> is a lot of things. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just super fun to drive. It's, again, it's got a special um, gearbox mm-hmm. uh, specifically for that car. And um, the engine's got variable cam timing. Yeah. Which, uh, I'll be honest, neither of us are the most technically minded. We really It means know something it means. to do with it changes. Like, if when you're uh, in the lower revs, it delays the valve timing. Right. And when you into, get into out. the higher revs, it advances it slightly. Yeah, um, and it basically means you just get this really even spread of of power across the rev range. Yeah, well, before we recorded this, we actually drove each other's cars True. so that we'd have a fresh uh, reminder of what they were like to drive, um, and could have had opinions on each other's car. Um, but I, yeah, I drove the Puma, and it was like for a one point seven naturally aspirated. It feels very quick. Like yeah. it's, I don't know whether it is that variable cam timing or what, but it's it almost feels when you first put your foot down in each gear, that it almost feels turbo-y. Like, yeah, like, I know like, what you mean. Like a little bit kind of push you back into your seat. It's very slightly. Yeah, not you, loads. Not loads, but you, it's nippy, definitely. Yeah. It's not a fast car. Um, it's never, it was never meant to be. No. But it's just super fun to drive and the, the handling's really literally good. literally designed to be fun to yeah. drive, I think, really. It's they? great. They did a faster version called the Ford Racing Puma. They're worth a lot now, aren't they? They're worth like... I saw one going for over 20 grand the other day. Oh my Word. Bearing in mind, I paid, I'm not going to say exactly what I paid, but it was less than a grand for mine. Yeah. Um, and that's got like 30 more horsepower and a wider uh, front tracking. Okay. Um, yeah. But they go for silly money. Yeah. Not really worth it. Something uh, else I love about that car yeah. is the short shift gearbox. So It's just a super easy like, shift. <laughs> and it's small, small details in cars, like make all the difference. And the metal gear knob <laughs> is something that I love. It's just, it feels kind of sporty and it's very, and very easy to shift and just so, sh- like I kept thinking that I was going to stall it because I wasn't quite in gear, but it's no, just no. a really nice it's short It's a really kind of quick shift and yeah. it's great. It's very nice to drive actually. It's a huge amount of fun and I actually love it. It's not the best car in the world to look at. No, I that's that. the only thing I would say is that unfortunately they're sporty, but they don't look particularly <laughs> pretty. Um, yeah, so that's 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 my car. It's great fun. I love it. And the best thing is that I get when I'm ragging it around day to day, I get like thirty six to a gallon. It's pretty good. On the motorway, I get mid forties. It's amazing. Obviously, it's not bad yeah. at all. Well, it's definitely a step up from your uh, Rover. Well, it's roughly twice as good. <laughs> it's, it's insane. <laughs> What's your new car? My new car is. I've kind of gone for a similar vibe. Anyway, um, it's a it's a long story. What happened to my old car? I used to have a Passat just because. I did a master's and I was commuting to Oxford every day. Was it 2005? Um, it was a 2005, like, two-litre diesel Passat turbo, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was really reasonably boring, but it was, you know, it was nippy and practical, and, and I really loved it when I had it. But lots of bad things happened to it. Um, it was the first generation where they made them with an electric handbrake, um, right. and I think they're quite renowned nowadays, now that they're quite old, Um they're now like prone to going wrong. So my, the handbrake didn't work and lots of stuff happened to it, which meant I had to get rid of it anyway. So I've bought, I've again, I've downsized. I've got a 2001, uh, Mark four golf GTI 1.8 turbo, which is very fun to drive. It's, um, like it's got, what is it? 150 horsepower, not to 60 in on paper, 8.2 seconds, yeah, which is pretty nippy. Um, yeah, it's really fast. It's, no, it's not really fast. It's um, <laughs> it's like 
nippy enough more than you need it handles amazingly it's i mean it's technically a hot hatch i know yeah, it's not no, a modern hot hatch 100%. but it's so and i've always wanted to, to own a hot hatch even if it is a slightly budget one um and it's really fun to drive isn't it I you drove really, it, yeah you? i drove it this morning and um yeah, i was pleasantly surprised i mean i guess it's fair to say that golfs aren't renowned for their handling no um but yours is good yeah like it's um they're slightly lower profile than the standard yeah. mark four golf yeah yeah exactly it's that got definitely slightly bigger helps. wheels and things yeah. and um it all feels really like direct and yeah um the last the last turbo car i drove was um my my duo partners my musical duo partners mazda 6 which is a two liter turbo diesel mm. you put your foot down and like five seconds later the turbo kicks in yeah so it's nothing just, that's what my you, you can't like. accelerate fast because you then change that you change up mm. and then the lag and, is and again. you're back into the no power range and you have yeah. to build the revs up again and then the turbo kicks in five yeah. seconds later whereas yours it's so much more it's so much quicker mm. and it's just so much more drivable um and yeah. you still get i think because it's a petrol like yeah. you were saying earlier um you still get some power in yeah. the low range before yeah. the turbo really See, this kicks is the in. thing, like, even if it was a, I know it'd be a lot slower if it was a 1.8 naturally aspirated, okay. but they would still have some go, yeah. whereas a naturally aspirated 2 litre diesel would be extremely mm. slow. Nothing. So I think that combination of a, like, reasonably big engine combined with a turbo mm, has this kind of nice yeah. uh, pairing where Something else you get a saying. lot of power. The interior in your car is very nice. That is something that really, really dragged. Like, when I saw the ad, I was like, I need that interior yeah, in my life. It's a full leather, full black leather interior. Black leather, Recaro, Recaro seats, I think they're yeah. called. Um, and it's got heated leather seats in the front, which at this time of year, it's November right now, in case you're watching this or listening to this later on. Um, and those heated leather seats literally make my life at the moment fair enough i, I wish i yeah i'm slightly jealous <laughs> <laughs> i never expected to own a car with heated leather seats at this age to be fair no it's fair just because it's a top i suppose it's because it's an old top spec yeah. car um but yeah i love it it's really great something i wanted to mention was that they also made a two liter naturally aspirated gti of the same age yeah um so mine's yeah the 1.8 turbo and i was reading on a on loads of forums were searching it when i before i bought this car and it was just like don't buy the two litre. It's so slow. And I looked up the specs on it. It's got 115 horsepower. So that's 35 horsepower less than your car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it does not 16 10.2, which I don't know why they can call that a GTI. So it's got 30 horsepower less and takes two seconds longer yeah. to get to 60 and miles yet, an hour. And it's still got a GTI badge on it. That's rubbish. Yeah, very rubbish. No offence again to anyone who owns one, but buy a 1.8. Yeah, um, buy the 1.8 turbo. Yeah. They're about the same price. So I don't know why you wouldn't. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah. It's probably yes. worth mentioning that uh, some other people in the V-Love Surf Wagon crew yeah. have uh, progressed onto new vehicles. Yeah. So Sam, who I'm sure we'll talk about it in more detail when he's next uh, sitting in this seat, um, he has just bought a van. So I think we might talk about vans for a little bit. Yeah, let's Strangely. Um, he's bought a T4, hasn't he? Yeah. So... Everyone loves a good VW van. So for some unknown reason, well, no, not unknown, actually. It's pretty well known. <laughs> um, VW vans, transporters specifically, are extremely sought after compared to the equivalent in Ford, yeah. you know, all of those other They ones. hold their value to a kind of almost weird level. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy how expensive they are because um, you get, like for the, Sam was saying when he was looking for a, T4, which is a, the fourth generation transporter VW, he was looking f like at the equivalent in like a um, what are they called Ford Transit, Transit yeah. and the um, like the mileage is, will always be way lower, be way better condition. Yeah, but he was just like, but it's not a VW. It's not. <laughs> and the thing is, is if you buy your uh, way lower mileage and newer Transit, five years down the line, mm. it's going to be worth. Yeah. way way less than you paid for it yeah initially whereas, whereas the t4 yeah. i think they've bottomed out in value and you see them going for you know you see them with like over three hundred thousand miles on the clock yeah. still going for you know yeah. over three grand yeah um if you look after them it's almost impossible to yeah. lose money so i think the reason that transporters are so kind of famous and sought after is because the t1s and the t2s the like really old ones became very famous as 
surfing camper vans. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were all part of the yeah kind of summer of love hippie yeah, movement. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, and then and somehow even the ones that they made in through the nineties and now even today, yeah, are st- have still got that vibe about them, and people still kit them out as camper vans and take them, you know, on holidays and to the beach and. That's great. great fun. Uh, so Sam's bought his for for work primarily. He does yeah. a lot of construction work, and he just needs room for all his tools, yeah. as well as obviously the occasional yeah. road trip and camping. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at getting one. Yeah, we so, might have two. In, so in our midst, <laughs> I just um, I just got back from a a UK tour, and we were touring in Lewis's Mazda Six. Mm. It's a good car. It's a saloon. But, um, <laughs> it is. Once you put all your music like musical equipment in and all your personal belongings yeah there's no room at all and um you just need more space so i'm looking at getting a t4 as well uh, yeah. predominantly to tour with yeah um, that's, that's be... what a great vehicle to tour in yeah exactly the thing about t4s i think which is why they're in that kind of sweet spot is that they're not so old like the t1s and t2s that they're really expensive because the only ones that are working have been looked after extremely well they're not so new that they're not a little bit retro still yeah so they've still got that very cool retro vibe but they're reliable yeah i was going to say i think they're the first of the vw transporters that you'd actually trust to take on a long drive yeah because exactly. the other ones they're great and i guess like obviously all the air-cooled ones it's very simple mm, like mechanically true. they're so simple yeah but you take them out for a drive in a hot day and they overheat yeah you go you drive down the motorway during the summer and they're, they're the hard shoulders are always just littered with T1s and T2s <laughs> yeah, that yeah. have overheated and yeah. have to pull over to cool down. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty funny, really. Yeah. So, yeah, T4s are, I think they're very, very cool still. Yeah, and they're, I love them. But they're a bit more reliable. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure Sam will talk to you more about that next time. Good cool. stuff. I think we're done, aren't we? Yeah, cheers for having me, bro. Right, that's all right. No worries. Um, I'm sure you'll be back on very soon That'd after I've seen fun. the other two guys. Thank you very much for listening or watching this video podcast. Um, Make sure to check out Carinium Radio if you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure to go and subscribe to us on YouTube if you're listening to this on Carinium Radio. Um, send the traffic both way, both yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll be back in a month's time to talk about more cars. Thank you very much. <laughs>